Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, Digimon Store Championships. So I participated in a lot of Store Championships in the August 22 season and at the last minute I was able to participate in another Store Championship and I actually was able to seal the deal and get my invite uh, winning me that Store Championship. So I participated not only in just a whole bunch of other store championships, but a whole bunch of regionals as well in terms of the online ones. And I did relatively well for the most part. I can't necessarily complain. I could have done better, sure, and won my invite earlier. But sometimes that's just the way the format goes. And especially at the beginning of the format when I was kind of floundering, just trying to figure out what I really wanted to play. After a lot of talk with my teammates and my friends, they just told me to cut all of the chaff and just run Gabumon because that's the deck that they think would fit me and my playstyle, and I do kind of enjoy the deck for the most part. So uh, as far as uh, the deck that I ran, well, it's just your stereotypical Gabumon X deck. So I'm going to be running uh, four copies of uh, Gabumon X. So this is just a good searching tool to just help with the overall consistency on top of being an X antibody Digimon. Then I ran uh, four copies of the uh, the starter deck 8 Gabumon just because, well, the extra DP does help in order for me to clear and hit specific numbers. Then I ran uh, four copies of the Searcher Gabu. So this is just your stereotypical Searcher for Gurus and Omnimons. And then my Spice Tech 1 of is one copy of Gabumon from BT1, just because, well, it's just another rookie that I could use to help with my overall rookie count, because I do think 12 is a little bit on the low side, so I just wanted to boost it up by one number, and uh, the 13th rookie actually did come in handy, on top of him being another good card if I need to hard play him, helps me draw cards, not necessarily losing cards in my hand. So that's my rookie lineup. As far as my champion lineup goes, uh, I ran uh, four copies of uh, Garurumon, the promo, just because, well, it's one of the better Garurumons for us to run. Drawing whenever we're attacking means that we could draw lots of cards because we're attacking lots of times with our higher stages. On top of the hard drop for four actually does come in handy when you're in certain brick situations, being one of the cheaper level fours that we could play, making him just a good card to use. Then I ran up four copies of uh, Garurumon X Antibody just because, well, the inheritable protection ability that he's giving from battle is just that super important to try to make sure that your Digimon are going to be sticking around as much as they possibly can. Then on top of that, uh, I ran uh, two copies of uh, Garurumon from BT5 just because the tempo in DP actually does come in handy. Then as far as my level fives go, I ran uh, four copies of uh, Weregurumon X. So Weregurumon X is just one of the, the uh, combo pieces to how the deck wants to function, just because he gets us an extra swing when we Digivolve uh, up into him, which is really, really important. And the bounce effect also could come in handy depending on the matchup, but mostly the restand is what we're looking to gain, just because I'm also running four copies of the promo Weregurumon. So the promo Weregurumon is the star of the deck. This is the powerhouse card just because that we could swing with this card as long as we have a Gururumon underneath him, unsuspend him, swing again, Digivolve him into a Wear X, then unsuspend the Wear X because we Digivolved on top of a Wear, and then swing again with two checks, just because he also gives the Inheritable of Security Attack plus one, so that way we could swing twice with this card for two checks, making it just a super high damage deck at a lower level, giving it some slight advantage over other stack-based decks that are trying to build up to their level 6. This is doing almost the same thing, just one stage earlier, and that one stage earlier in terms of tempo actually could matter and does matter. Then, as far as my high levels go, I ran three copies of Metal Gururumon X. So, Metal Gururumon X is kind of a win more card or kind of the sub win condition for the deck, just because uh, with uh, our level fives, we could easily break five security. So, uh, ideally, we're going to be using Metal Guru X more so as the defensive backbone and to add some extra pressure just because the bounce is pretty nice. The blocker ability is pretty nice on top of the fact that we're most likely going to have some protection, or ideally, we want to have some protection and then uh, the effect that uh, we could just use his ability to bounce the opponent's Digimon and unsuspend himself uh, gives us lots of offensive and defensive plays making him a very nice well-rounded card even if we don't have the base. 
And speaking of the base, I'm only going to be running one copy of EX1 Metal Guru, just because uh, this is uh, one of the cheaper uh, level sixes that we could go into, just because if we're already swinging a lot and we have a huge hand size, then Digivolving into this card uh, could be super cheap and efficient, and that just allows us to easily combo with our Metal X to be able to help close out the games that way. Then I'm also going to be running one copy of Omnimon, again as a alternate win condition. We don't necessarily need to see our higher stages at all, they just help out when we're unable to just close out the game with our lower stage Digimon. Then, as far as the options go, I ran three copies of X Antibody. So, X Antibody is just an absolutely insane card to allow us to combo off and make a lot of lines of play possible, just because we want to ideally use this card with our level fives to be able to easily go into our uh, X forms, or we could even use this uh, with our level five to be able to go into our metal X in case we don't have uh, our base form to go off of. So, this just helps uh, enable a lot of our power plays. We could even if we really wanted to use this to go from our level fours into our level fives if we really wanted to for some early game control to try to punish the opponent so this is just a really good card on top of the security ability at having a nice uh, anti-tempo effect which is generally what blue likes to do because I'm also going to be running three copies of Hammer Spark because Hammer Spark is still that good just for some anti tempo when it's in our security and uh, some extra tempo to make even more powerful plays possible when it's in our hand. So it's just still that good of a card to use. Then I ran two copies of Blue Memory Boost. So Blue Memory Boost is just a good, again, tempo tool to be able to gain us some instant memory at a later turn uh, thanks to the delay ability and the fact that we could use its searching ability to help make our deck more consistent is just super ideal for how we want to play. Then as far as my tech one ofs in terms of options go, I ran uh, one copy of Ice Wall because it's Ice Wall, one of the best if not the best defensive option in the game especially for blue, and one Kakaitis Breath uh, just to try to have as a nice security threat uh, for when the opponent is trying to make a big power swing or to try to uh, use it from our hand when we have enough tempo to be able to get rid of uh, cards that we might not otherwise. Then, as far as the Tamers go, I ran three copies of Cool Boy because Cool Boy is one of the best consistency tools uh, for the deck just because we are still running a lot of X Antibody traded Digimon and we're still running some X Antibody options to be able to try to find uh, what we're looking for. And most of the time, we're just looking for our X cards uh, to be able to utilize them as effectively as we possibly can. And then the last card of the deck and last Tamer I ran was one copy of uh, Analog Youth. So Analog Youth is just a another cheap efficiency tool just because like cool boy it is a white tamer that's a hard place for two digging us three cards into our deck on top of the fact that uh, it helps it make some of our plays a little bit safer because when we're swinging with our higher level digimon then uh, we could use analog youth as a nice reload ability to try to help it continue the pressure going by uh, hatching an egg and getting us a memory during our turn, and if it's during the opponent's turn, then gaining that one memory can still help with anti-tempoing the opponent. Then, as far as my eggs go, I just ran for Sunomon. I could have ran a 5th Digitama, but I really didn't feel like I needed to, and I just wanted the consistency on the DP boosting ability. So, uh, it's just a nice uh, Digitama to have, and we don't really need a draw Digitama, just because we're already drawing so much in the deck as is, with all of our Digivolutions, especially Digivolutions for zero. We're di drawing a lot off of our Cool Boy, we're drawing a lot off of our Garurumon. Like, the deck just has lots of drawing and digging tools to be able to help make it as consistent as possible, making it so that the DP boost, especially for our level 5s, is super valuable, so that way our level 5s can try to live as much as they possibly can, which is why I also like running uh, the uh, BT5 Guru and uh, the Starter Deck 8 uh, Gabu. But for the most part, this is just uh, the deck that I ran and uh, the deck that I've been uh, tweaking and editing, and I think I got it into a pretty good spot where I'm really comfortable with. And while I'm on the subject of uh, store championships, it actually seems like there was an update to how store championships are ran in terms of uh, how invites get active and online. So uh, the big change is instead of uh, 16 players it being needed as the minimum requirement for store championships to have the invite, it seems like they changed that to 8, which I think is pretty good considering there's still no pass down system. So uh, people and stores have uh, better opportunities to be able to have invites available. 
considering the event that I played in only had 12 people. So that minimum requirement of eight helped to get the store championship to actually have an invite that was worth fighting for. And again, I managed to take first and I faced some pretty strong decks and pretty strong opponents. So going into round one, I faced off against Alphamon. Alphamon uh, unfortunately didn't see his parts and pieces in time, but it was able to utilize Congo to be able to buy some time and stop my level five from swinging, reducing the amount of damage that I was going to be doing. But uh, unfortunately, he just didn't find his parts and pieces, and I still was able to close out both games relatively quickly. Then going into round two, I faced off against D Brigade, and well, D Brigade tried to do D Brigade type things, but unfortunately, he didn't have as much damage as he needed, and his security wasn't as good as he wanted it to be. So I just ran over his Digimon and uh, I was able to bounce uh, the other Digimon I wasn't able to run over to be able to establish some good board control, forcing some uh, options uh, out of his hand to give me lots of memory to be able to set up into a better stack. And then I used that better stack to be able to kill the opponent while I was chipping at his security all at the same time, trying to pose as much threat on the field as I possibly could. Then uh, going into round three, I faced off against Black War Greymon and I kind of knew that that uh, Black War Greymon uh, really needs and relies heavily on going all the way up the chain to try to get as much value as it possibly could. And unfortunately, I just put a lot of pressure early on just because I'm moving out and aggressing one stage earlier and his D Digivolve, while it was annoying, it didn't really do a whole lot to, to be able to stop uh, some of my game plan. So I just uh, went as low as I possibly could underneath a lot of his Digimon and he didn't have a blocker as often as he wanted it to be. So I just kind of uh, took the game from there on top of the fact that I abused some of the fact that uh, my bounce effects actually were relatively effective. And the similar story was kind of going into round four. Unfortunately, my opponent did have uh, some uh, bricky hands, putting me at a decent memory count early on. And even though I didn't have the best hands, I just had a better hand than my opponent and I was still able to uh, dig my way out just because of the amount of memory that he gave me. So I just, again, built up a good stack. He had uh, less protection and less defensive options uh, than Black War Greymon, which is why I think Black War Greymon has been doing well as a whole, but he still tried to hit as hard as he possibly could. I was just able to go a little bit faster than him just because he didn't have the best stacks and the best situations to be able to aggress with me. So that's kind of just a quick and dirty rundown of uh, my event, and I uh, had lots of fun playing in all of the store champions championships, win or lose, on top of it doing as well as I possibly could in the regionals, all to try to help uh, get me enough practice to be able to be seasoned on my deck to feel comfortable against a wide variety of matchups to eventually take a uh, store championship. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, as always, uh, don't forget to, to like, uh, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.